Hey guys, Adam here, and welcome to another episode of On the Couch Rewind. In anticipation for this week's Amazing Spider-Man 2, I will be reviewing Amazing Spider-Man. Now, like, unlike Captain America, where it was really just Chris Evans that had me concerned for that movie, this... Everything about this movie w was a concern, mainly because it had only it really had only been five years since uh, since Amazing Spider-Man three pissed us all off, and there was talk about Spider-Man four, how it was going to be done, blah blah blah. This was a movie that really just made me ask why why reboot it? Why why do we need to reboot this? We could have just made another sequel and fixed the mistakes there. And even when the trailer came out, I was still going why? There's no point. When I but as the release came got closer and closer and closer, my fears died uh, I to the point where I was looking forward to it. I thought this might be the Spider-Man movie I'm looking forward to um, that I've been wanting. I'm not that the not not saying that the Sam Raimi movies are bad. The first two are good. I love the first two Spider-Man movies. Three can go fucking can go fuck itself. Um, but. This was definitely the Spider-Man movie I wanted for a long time. I mean, like I said, I love the first two the first two Sam Raimi movies because they're very much like Spider-Man back in the '60s. This was very this was much more akin to while while people would say the Ultimate Spider-Man, and I am inclined to agree. I also feel like it's very much still the 616 universe Spider-Man, especially in terms of how Spider how Peter uh, is is very much a uh, a teenager when he first starts off as Spider-Man. When he gets his costume, he's already a teenager. I mean, he's still in high school. When Uncle Ben dies, he's still in high school. I'm glad they kept that. That is actually kind of the focus, is the, the fact that he's in high school. Uh, and, of course, everyone knows the plot. It's, the plots take kind of the same, if any, uh, like the others. Peter is a high school student, a social outcast, gets his powers bent from being bent by a radioactive spider. Uncle, his Uncle Ben dies. He blames himself. He uses his powers to, be a, to become a hero. Uh, the difference is instead of uh, the difference is instead of Norm Osborn being the main villain, the lizard is, and really, and the other thing about this is the one thing the movies never did that that this movie does, or at least halfway does, is they this is that they give us kind of the story of. Of Peter's parents leaving him, they act. That is actually the opening scene. Is Peter's parents? Their ha their home is broken into. Um, Richard Parker, Peter's dad, f f realizes someone was trying to steal his research. He's a scientist that works at Oscorp. Uh, Oscorp being kind of actually, I guess you could say Norman Osborn is still the main villain, but. Oscorp because he's like he's like the emperor. You don't see him until later. Um, but he's so Richard Richard um, so Peter's parents drop him off at Aunt May's uh, at Uncle Ben and Aunt May's house to live with them for a while while they try to while they go into hiding. Years later you find out that they were killed in a plane crash. Peter is a social outcast. I mean, very much... I mean, he's not like the Tobey Maguire one where he's just a nerd and nobody likes him. He feels like he's out of place. He... I mean, he's... Which makes... Which make, which is another reason why I like this movie. I can relate to him a lot more than I could in the Tobey Maguire movie. Because 
Whereas, yeah, he's still nerdy. He still has a hard time. You can't really relate to him because the moment he gets his powers, all, like, I want to say all his troubles went away. But his social outcast status goes away. Here it still kind of stays until after, until after his uncle dies. Um, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but yeah, they the and even Mark Webb, the director, even said the nerd this the definition of a nerd has changed. Nerd has actually, in a way, has become sexy. Thanks to comic books and whatnot. Nerd has become sexy. A social outcast has not, and that is what Peter is. He's a social outcast. You can tell he's very shy, very awkward. Uh, Andrew Garfield does a damn good job at playing that. And and to me, he's the, the to me he is the definitive Peter Parker. He or uh, in terms of live action, he is he's Peter Parker. Um, I mean, no disrespect to Tom McGuire, but Andrew Garfield has, did a much better job. Especially when he's a Spider-Man, he definitely does a very... He doesn't just do social awkward, he doesn't do, just do shyness. He also does smart asses. Whether he's Spider-Man or Peter Parker, he's still, he's very much a smart ass. And that is something I really missed from the, uh... From the from the uh, Sam Raimi movies, I mean, yeah, he'll, yeah, P Spider Man in those movies did it occasionally, but he didn't do it like, like, like this one does. He he's very much a smart ass. I mean, yeah, he won't do it constantly, but he'll do it when he needs to, and it, it actually feels organic. It feels it feels genuine, like he's like that, like um, the car thief scene. It's hilarious. I love that scene so much because he's just being a little, he's just being an asshole to this, to this poor car thief. You feel really bad for the car thief because he's just like, oh yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just, uh, oh yeah, good job, good job. Just crawl out, crawl out the window. Yeah, yeah, good job, good job, man, good job. <laughs> he's, he's great and I, I love him for that. I love that he does that. But even when it, and it's Peter Parker, I did it, I did it. He still does that. Um, he's and it feel and it feels genuine. It feels organic when he does that. It feels more ad lib than it does scripted. I like that. Um, uh, God, uh, Reese Iphens as Kirk Connors, the Lizard, is not a bad choice. You actually, while while I do like Dylan Baker again, I like Dylan Baker's performance, but you don't get to see him as the Lizard. Because he's just—he's really just more of a cameo appearance than anything else. Here he's the focus, and he knew Peter's father. He, they were friends. They were good friends. Here you actually here, and this is what I like about the con the lizard in the comics is Connors is not a villain. He's n not a horrible person. He's a man desperate to regain something he has lost. He. And you get behind that. You feel for him for doing that. You understand why he wants, why he became the lizard. It's really out of desperation. Out of the fact that he wants his arm back. He's waited long enough that he's willing to test the serum on himself to get that arm back. Not caring, of, uh, knowing, knowing, the, knowing the side effects, but not caring. And when the lizard takes over... He still retains that his genius, but the mind of the lizard has has poisoned him to where he realizes humanity is weakness, is the real weakness. Whereas lizards, a uh, lizard men, are the are the real are the real masters of the world. You can you kind of understand where he's coming from the, with that though, it, because he does he does because he just he just wants his arm back, but it's gone to a point where he where he's willing to lose his humanity just to have it back. Uh, also, a lot of people complained about the lizard not having a snout. One thing people forget or refuse to acknowledge is that. 
That is what he looked like in his first appearance. I mean, if you never read a comic, you should at least know his, the uh, the cover of that. The cover of that um, of that comic is he didn't have a snout. It it was a very human looking face. Now, not saying that the CGI was great. If anything, it wasn't that good at all. But I'm glad they stuck with that because it gives more room to him coming back for sequels and having and possibly mutating to look like to getting a snout. Um, God. Um, uh, of course, but also the makeup effect for when he started getting his lizard look was good too. I like that. Um, uh, Hands down, one of my favorite performances of anything, though, is one of my in this movie is uh, Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy. It's going to be a shame when they go to the her to her inevitable fate in these movies, because I love this character. I love her so much. To me, she is. To me, she is Peter's one true love. She's everything that Peter is. Just my just. A little smarter and a little more popular, <laughs> um, but um, but and, and I'm just gonna end up missing her when it happens. I don't know when it's gonna happen, but it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen, and I'm going and I'm gonna cry when it happens. Even if even if like this, what whichever sequel does it, and even if the sequel sucks, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry because I'm gonna miss this performance. Because I love Gwen Stacy. I love this character. She's funny. She's smart. She's um, she she's also strong. And this is something that really pissed me off about um, about Mary Jane and the Sam Raimi movies. Is that she was useless. She was nothing more than a damsel in distress. She never she could never hold on, hold her own in anything. Not saying that the character in the comics is bad. I love the character in the comics. But in the movies, she's just a damsel in distress who always gets caught no matter what. Um, Gwen Stacy, however, went up against the lizard while, I mean, still hiding because she knew that she couldn't exactly go against the lizard face to face. But she actually held her own using a spray can, a spray can and, a, and a torch to go up against the lizard, and she survived. Mary Jane didn't even do that. Um, uh, the dude that played Flash, I can't remember his name, the dude that played Flash Thompson is actually really good as well. Um, like, in the, and again, in the original, I know I feel like I'm shitting on, on the original, but I'm trying not to. Flash... Thompson in the originals was really just a bully. He was an asshole. No redeeming quality. In this one, he has redeeming value because he is, that is like what he is in the comics, where he is Peter's bully. But later on, he actually becomes Peter's best friend. Or one of Peter's best friends. Uh, really to the point where he even becomes Peter's best man at his wedding to, to Mary Jane. And they actually incorporate that. I mean, he's not important, but they actually show the stages of him going from the bully to being humiliated to him deciding Peter's uncle has just been murdered. He needs a friend now. I am done. I'm done being the bully. I'm going to be his friend. And to being, hey, Peter, how's it going? Want to hang out? That that is, and I like that. I like this little scenes they put in there to show Flash actually getting some character development. <laughs> and you know what? I would actually like it if Peter does tell Flash, "Hey, Flash, guess what? I'm Spider-Man. Believe it or not, watch flip, flip, uh, flip, I crawl on walls." And he actually helps him out. I want to. I mean, I don't. I don't expect it to happen, but I want it. But I'd like to see if it does. Um, uh, Martin Sheen as Uncle Ben was really good. Actually, I actually like him in this. Uh, um, a, again, a lot more than Cliff Robertson because I mean, 
uh, because he's much more, he's, he feels more like a man who's raising a teenager than just the kind uncle who can't get mad. Because when, because when this Uncle Ben gets mad, he gets mad, and he, but it doesn't feel like he's been an asshole. He feels like, it feels like he's a, a parent who, who's trying to teach his nephew, he's, he feels like an uncle trying to be his father, being a father, because he ha, because Peter has none, right, didn't, didn't have one growing up for most of his life, and it actually feels like it, so when he dies, it's a very heartbreaking moment, and not, and you and pl plus you know who the killer is. Not none of that. Oh yeah, by the way, it wasn't this guy. It was that guy who accidentally shot him. God, it's about to be three. Um, Aunt May, uh, Sally Field. You the, the the more you watch it, the more the better. The more you kind of grow into the performance is what I'm going to say. Because when I first found out she was Aunt May, Sally Field was Aunt May, I didn't like it. Even when I saw the movie, I didn't care for it. But the more I watched the movie, the more I started liking the performance. Uh, so, yeah, that was nice. Um, uh, and probably the best, Dennis Leary is Captain George Stacy. Even if this movie sucked, I would have had I would have had Dennis Leary being the best thing in this movie. Cause it, even because I enjoyed it, I enjoyed the shit out of his performance. He's great. I mean, for God's sakes, it's Dennis Leary. It's fucking Dennis Leary. I love Dennis Leary. So seeing him in this movie is great. He was a perfect choice. Um, God, now I'm trying to think. Um, wow, I've gone on pretty long on this. Uh, the f now, negatives, like I said, lizard special effects weren't great. Um, there were a few things about this movie that weren't great, especially like CGI. Um, understand, but understandable. Um, now, the swinging effects were act were practical. That wasn't most of that was not CGI. Uh, someone was actually s swinging. Um, uh, and also the fact that they didn't catch the Peter never catch the uh, the uh, the Uncle Ben's killer. I'm hoping they get to that in the sequel, but I kind of doubt it at this moment. Uh, but I again, I really hope they do. They really should. Um, uh, the story was good. I like the fact that it was dark, but not like. Dark Knight Trilogy dark. It was dark enough to still be, but still with a little lightheartedness to make it still, to to where you still know it's a Spider-Man movie. It's still Spider-Man. Spider-Man, I mean, Spider-Man can go dark, as but it always retains that lightheartedness that Spider-Man is known for. Um, uh, and, um, God, I'm trying to think now. Oh, God, I can't think. Uh, sorry, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's a good movie. I mean, yeah, there were plenty of people who don't like this movie mainly because of it being a reboot five years after Spider-Man Three. Honestly, now the more I think about, it, the more I realize it is a smart move. It is. It was time to for a clean slate. It really is. Um, so yeah, I would recommend this movie. I would highly recommend this movie. Um, so yeah, Amazing Spider-Man. 8 out of 10. I love this movie. I enjoy it. I what? I continue to watch it now. I mean, especially now that I got on Blu-ray. Um, I would recommend this movie. Uh, the writing is good. The chemistry between the two leads is really good. Between Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone is fantastic. Uh, um, Dennis Leary is great. Uh, some of the, um, I mean, while some of the CGI is not is not good, uh, there's plenty. It doesn't really. It's it's not so distracting that it completely takes you out of the movie because there's plenty of other things in the movie that 
helps it, that keeps you sucked in. So that, so that, uh, that gives it a little leeway. Um, but yeah, um, this movie, I just love this movie, so. <clears throat> yeah, I love this movie so much it makes me sneeze. <laughs> uh, so yeah, 8 out of 10 for Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, tomorrow I'll be seeing Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, until then, bye.